Hello, 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 everyone. What's going on, Yankee fans? I am Bill Corpus Crispy Murphy, joined by Danny Boy Reginald, and welcome to another exciting edition of Bombers Banter here on SIN. Danny Boy, how's it hanging, buddy? Good, man. Can't complain. The Yankees... They've been on a roll since the early portion of March. So the late portion of March, excuse me. Been very, very, very excited so far about the season. Yes, Yankees have had a good start to the season. They're looking good. We're going to talk about here's what we're going to do today. We're going to. 22 wins, by the way. So 22 that's... wins, most in Thank MLB, if I, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about late March into April. We're going to. And as in tribute to John Sterling's retirement, mm. we're going to give you our top five Sterling home run calls. Let's go. And, of course, Bill's revenge is coming. Stump the Reg. Mm -hmm. yep. Oh, Reg, you know I'm coming for you. Can't wait for it. It's like the, it's like a horror movie. Bill's revenge. You know, last time Bill got so desperate to try to stump me that... Uh, yeah, I should have been impressed with those questions. He gave... He gave me a, a cakewalk of a question. I was like, oh, that's not going to be the same time. That's not going to be the same time this time, buddy. Oh, my God. He, Reg is scared. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not scared. I'm just prepared. <laughs> I know it's going to um, In any case. Uh, but, yes, Yankees currently, as we're recording, are 22-13. They're finishing a series. Right now against the Tigers, so that's a that's something that we will recap in the May recap. But we gotta get to late March and into April because the Yankees, Billy Boy, ended up going nineteen, get nineteen wins in, in that stretch, and I believe they only had like thirteen losses, right? So. So, so the so, Yankees I mean, have gotten off to a strong start. Very strong start. But the thing that scares me is because usually, Reg, you know this, I know this, every Yankee fan and their mother knows this, the Yankees usually start slow. But you know what they say, Reg, it's not about how you start, it's about how you finish. Yeah. Because remember two years ago when the Yankees had that great start from April to July? Remember that? Oh, yeah. And then, and then in the second half of the season, they... Yep. Because, because, you know, if, if you took out the first half of the 2022 season, Yankees don't make the playoffs. Yeah. But that's the problem. But... So I don't know right now with a smart start, with this strong start, if I should be relieved and doing backflips or if I should be absolutely terrified of what's to come. It depends on what happens. Um, at the end of the day, the Yankees getting off to a pretty fast start was actually big because, you know, we're trying to send a message to the Baltimore Orioles who have been phenomenal. We're trying to send measures pretty much across Major League Baseball. But yeah, look how that Orioles series went. But, but but definitely to the Baltimore Orioles and all the other teams at the top of the American League, the Mariners and the the Guardians, the Twins, all those people. That, you know, we're not – and baseball, too, if you really think about it, that we're not playing. That we are going to go after wins, that we are a strong team, that we are a World Series contender. And the big reason why is the acquisition of Juan Soto. And he's I need, been a beast. I need, I and mean, we need to be very clear about this. Juan Soto, who leads the team with eight home runs and the top the RBIs and everything in the in the franchise right now. I'm telling you right now, this team is that much better with Juan Soto in the lineup. 
and he is as advertised, Bill. Oh, as absolutely. advertised. Does, does this make you think right now, Reg, mm-hmm. that the Yank that if Soto continues his hot streak, the Yankees better be okay. What do you want? You know what? We don't care if you want if you want my house, my kids' college fund, and everything else. Here you go. I don't know about your kids' college fund, but I definitely, definitely. Oh, you know what I meant. Definitely, this guy deserves to be paid. Deserves money. I don't know. I, I won't go as far as saying blank check. So you still got to be reasonable. But at the same time, Soto has made this Yankee team that much better. And it is not even close. The team is has a bit of a pep in their step. They're a stronger home run hitting team. They produce more runs. His war is off the charts, Bill. It's it, and, and thank goodness that Brian Cashman and, and you know we can talk about you know the Frank goes and the we obviously miss Higashioka because he's just a cool he was a cool guy for the Yankees. But at the end of the day, getting Juan Soto was needed, and. The short porch is thanking the high heavens that Juan Soto uh, is in the lineup. Yankee fans love it. And we have to acknowledge it. We have to acknowledge the fact that the team is better because, and it shows, it shows everywhere. Now, we, we talk about how Soto's been good. The rest of the Yankee lineup is so kind of up and down. Volpe got off to a hot start. He's cooled off lately. Um, Cabrera, Stanton, they're streaky, which is not what you need. You know, we need Stanton to be on a hot streak. Uh, Rizzo's been hot. We we don't need Cabrera to be great, but we certainly need to be productive. Absolutely. Um, Now, you talked about Rizzo. Rizzo got off to a very slow start. And he hasn't been himself since he got injured last season. Last um, couple games, though, he's been pretty hot. But, yeah, I will have to say, where Rizzo is starting to pick it up a little bit, which is good to see. He did not have a good April. He was oh, terrible. Yeah. And May is a good sign that maybe the rest of the season you'll be fine. Uh, but I- I'm a little worried. And, and you know what? At the end of the day, it's okay. I think we've seen the best of Anthony Rizzo. I think we've seen him at his peak. And now we Yankees are sort of getting the tail end of the beginning of the tail end of his career where he's good, but he's not as good as he was when he was with the Cubs. You know, the the big part of his career was when he was with Chicago and he was at his peak there. We're not getting that Rizzo anymore, but that's okay because He's still a very productive first baseman, even though defensively he hasn't been great either. Um, and, you know, hitting-wise, he still adds that protection in that lineup, even though he may not be as productive as he used to be. He still puts the threat uh, for opposing teams. Yes, he still puts the threat. I think, you know, recently he's been on a hot streak. Last week he hit his 300th home run. We tip our hats to you, Mr. Rizzo. Congrats, sir. We, you know, he's been, and I know we're focusing mainly on March and April, but, you know, this Friday, for instance, he was, he got the game-winning RBI single. Yesterday he hit a three-run home run. So I think Rizzo's starting to pick up right now. And, and let's be honest, you know, April was not a good month for him. He was striking out a lot. Like I said, he had a lot of defensive troubles, which was shocking to see. I think I think defense in general in April was atrocious. Oh, um, like I said, but it was not good. It cost well, the Yankees a lot of runs. And matters it was just the same results in practice. It, it was so rough to watch. It was, it was really rough. The beginning with those most passionate um, about- Sorry about that. <laughs> 
we can't edit that, but that's okay. Um, but but yeah, like I I, I truly think that you know this Yankee team has to be better defensively. They have to be uh, stronger on the hitting side. In which I, I, I'm starting to see it, but again, yeah, we can't be streaky all season. That, that's the big thing. And it starts with your big player. It starts with Stanton and Judge. We have a bone pick with Aaron Judge. And I know Aaron Judge is, is slowly but surely starting to, just like Rizzo, starting to hit the ball better, starting to give more power um, and all that stuff. But Aaron Judge had an atrocious April. Oh, he did. He only batted like what two oh seven, you know, and you know barely any power, and just like Rizzo, a lot of strikeouts, um, which is unlike Aaron Judge, and that's the Aaron Judge we cannot see, especially since we gave him that large contract that a lot of fans like me, even though we really wanted Judge and we had to get him. We're very skeptical about, you know, I, I'm always scared of these big contracts. Because you know what? Like I always said, Reg, it's like when I talk about this, and uh, I know this is a Bianchi podcast, not a Giants podcast. When I talk about this and the Daniel Jones contract, what do I always say? The Aaron Judge contract, it wasn't the money that bothered me. It was the amount of years that bothered me. Yeah, exactly. But when it came to the Daniel Jones contract, it wasn't the years that bothered me. It was the money that bothered me. Right. And, so, and, but and for, Aaron Judge, Judge, yeah, for, for Aaron Judge, it's never about the money. Aaron Judge It was the amount money. of years because, God forbid, he gets hurt. We're stuck with him. Yeah. And listen, I love Aaron Judge. And I know you do too, Reg, but I love Aaron Judge, but still, why are you going to give him all this money? Last year, he missed a good chunk of the season because he was hurt. And because, like, here's the problem when you have these milestone years, because the year before he got the 62, they were like, okay, Aaron Judge, take everything. Fine. Here you go. Here you go. Just, just sign. Sign. But these people don't realize that when you make all this money, when you sign him to all these years, he's bound to have slow seasons. He's bound to have bad starts. He's bad to get. He's bound to get injured. And listen, I'm not ready to scream at Judge yet and call him a bum no. and say he's having no. a mess of a no. year. But here's the thing, Reggie. It's only April. Well, it's now May, but oh, you get what I'm saying. It's only May. Let's not freak out yet. If he starts having, if he's still this by the end of June, then I think it's time to panic. What do you think? Well, I think only because of the amount of years left on his contract. I can agree. I think it, it would be a big concern if Aaron Judge, even though he, again, like we've acknowledged, he is starting to hit the ball bit, um, which is really nice to see. Um, he had a great series in Milwaukee. Um, and, you know, again, starting to see the ball better and stuff. Um, but if we're going to start seeing some low points in Aaron Judge, this is year two of his new contract. If we're going to start seeing some low points in Aaron Judge's, you know, Big time spots. Um, that has to be a concern. And you have to be concerned because of what happened last year, even though Judge was good when he played. You know, we have to acknowledge that. He was out for a big, big chunk of last season. And then he comes back this season, 2024, starts off slow, starting to pick it up, but we don't know exactly where it's gonna go yet. And you know, yeah, you 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 really would have to be concerned if. By July, he really hasn't gone to where he needs to be. And, and again, like that, that's right just now, the, the harsh reality is that's just the harsh reality of the situation. Is this a bad situation? Yes and no. 
bad because we need to see him hit more. But, yeah, good, yeah. but the thing is, it's like, you know, again, everyone goes through slumps. Yeah, of course. And, and that, that's gone that's the thing. That's the thing. Gone you know, slumps. He's slumping right now. This means he's going to slump for the season. But we have to start adjusting our expectations based on what the Yankees gave Judge. I don't know if that's the best way to put it, but that that's the way I would put it. You, you have to sort of look at it differently now. And we are going to have to see Judge perform oh. to his best level. Oh, there's no if, ands, or buts about it, my friend. Um, so Judge is off to a slow start. Yeah. It, so slow, the Yankee fans started booing him, which was... Uh, yeah, Bill, I see you. I see you. Oh, come on. Okay, for those of you who don't know, two weeks ago, I was actually at the and game for yourself, by the way. when Judge went old for four. Mm -hmm. I was at that game. I was with my brother. I was with his girlfriend. And when Judge... And when Judge went old for four, the, fa the booze just rained down on him. And listen, I'm kind of ashamed to say, I was one of the fans booing him. I would have done it too. I mean, it, it's the bottom line is he has to be better. He knows he has to be better. And you he, know what? It's like the captain, so... and and we gave him a lot of years. And I am so sick of like, I remember um two years ago in the playoffs, I booed him too. And I remember I got into this with Mike Rifkin, who said, why would you boo your best player? I'm like, if he's not performing, he deserves to get booed. And I'm so sick of these articles last year who are like, well, I don't think it's fair to boo the players. And do you need share respect in this fine no, organization? If you, if you, no, if you play stinky, you play stinky. We're going to tell you about it. Like, I am so tired. Like, listen, and we tell you this all the time, people. We're not the Yes Network. We're not Michael K. If we see, we call it as we hear on Bombers Banter, and Reg can testify to this. We call it as we see it. Yeah. We're not always going to... And listen, we we love the Yankees. That's why we do this. We love Aaron Judge. But we're not going to sit here and make excuses for him. And, and we have to stop making excuses. That's we're not Michael... I'm not Michael K. This isn't the uh, Yes Network. Uh, I'm tired of the excuses, too. And, you know, I'm so tired last year of these people who were clutching their pearls because they booed just, how dare they? They need to show respect to this fine organization. Shut up. Just shut up, you freaking crybabies. Shut up. Jeter got booed. Mantle got booed. So if you're going to sit here and say that Judge doesn't deserve to be moved, shut the hell up. Every if if he's having a bad game, if he's having a if he's in a slump, he deserves to get. If okay, everyone goes through slumps, but if this is continuing bad, he deserves to get booed. As much as I love Aaron Judge, I have zero regrets about booing him two weeks ago. I have no regrets. So we we as fans have every right to turn on a player if he's not playing well. Bottom line, um, so that's with Aaron Judge. Again, we're seeing better results out of him lately. Again. We'll we'll acknowledge that he had a good series in Milwaukee, uh, where he hit bombs. That was pretty good to see. Um, he got ejected on Saturday uh -oh. against the Tigers. That was his first ejection of his career. And you know, Aaron Judge doesn't strike me as a guy that gets pissy at an umpire, but somehow he got really really riled up. He he didn't say anything like terrible. He just said that was. That that call was BS, and he's been BS in all game. But um, enough for the umpire to say, you know what? I'm tossing you. Um, yeah, but you know what it is with umpires. It was, it, was, it was a weak. It was a weak ejection. Like he turned, he's like sitting there turned yelling. around, and then he tossed him out. That, that was a weak ejection. If he was sitting there saying, "Well, you know what?" If he said, "Um, you can go after yourself," then. Then yes, fine, throw him out. Okay, yeah. And, and by the way, he was asked if he why he didn't get his money's worth. Like, 
after the fact, he's like, he has plenty. <laughs> so I, I thought that was okay. Funny. You know, that I gotta give credit to Jack. He I, I came off very classy in that. Point. And yeah, but like he used to think the umps, you sneeze the wrong way, they'll throw you out now. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I think the ump was kind of weak in that. Like, I don't think Aaron Judge said anything that was, you know, warranted to be thrown out. Um, so I thought it was a weak ejection and um, silly on the umpire's part. And, um, you know, if I'm Major League Baseball, I got to get these umpires under control, man, because they are the softest umpires I've ever seen in my life, dude. Or what happened a couple – what happened last week with Aaron Boone? Yeah. That was ridiculous. He didn't say anything. The fan did. Yeah, exactly. So it was it, – so it, the, the umpires have gotten really control – Become really big control freaks, basically. Yeah, they become a bunch of tyrants. So. Yeah. Well, well, I think they're just tired of the, of the players dictating the narrative and stuff. But it's not helping because they're they're still making terrible calls, and they're making the wrong calls. And then they're 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 so afraid that they're not even going to look at the players' eyes and then throw them out. It's stupid. It's really stupid. Uh, they're just getting. Like, listen, bad calls are bad calls. Yeah. Dude, I'm getting sick of these umpires, bro. Yeah, no, they're, they're, something's got to be done about it. By the way, did you see, uh, before we can get back to the Yankees real quick, did you see this? I've never seen this before, Bill. So the Cubs, um, one of the Cubs players, used his helmet as like an extension of his body part while grounding first, going to second base for a double. And the umpire, he put his helmet on the base. None of his body part was on the base. Just his helmet that he leaned. He called him safe. The helmet was on the base. Not any of his, not his hand, not his feet, nothing. His helmet, and he called him safe. That is BS. That's a terrible call. I mean, the, the, the umpire. I, I give him credit for being horrible. creative. By the way, give him credit for being creative. And, and can we give a, a kudos to Steve Gelbs for reaching out to Major League Baseball Steve Gelbs of S and Y, who does a great job uh, on Mets coverage. Can't say so much about Jet coverage, but whatever. Um, Steve Gelbs reached out to Major League Baseball and said, if the Mets reviewed that, that would have been called out. So uh, good on Steve Gelbs for getting that information out there because I have never seen that in my life. Um, but but that, that just goes to the point that these umpires are terrible. Um, but getting back to the Yankees, um, so overall, overall, despite the defensive issues and the inconsistency with the hitting, the Yankees had overall had a good April. And the big reason why they had a good April was because of their pitching. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. For April, I'm saying no coal, no problem. And you know what? I I have to give credit to the three big time starters. Rodon has actually been good. He's gone deep into games, which is pretty nice to see. Stroman. There are times Stroman hasn't been great, but Stroman's done enough to win games. That's been really, really good to watch. Um Stroman's been good. Mm-hmm. Um Schmidt. I think hit and miss. Yeah, it it it, it 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 depends what you meant, really. Um, it really does depend on, um, you know, whether he has the stuff or not. Sort of like Louis Hill, you know, he, you know, it, it's if he's on his game, he's on his game. If he's not, he's not. But shout out to Cortez. Shout out to to um. Rodon, shout out to Stroman. They've all been doing a solid job. One, two, three punch there. Um, top of the rotation. And then the bullpen has been terrific. I mean, the bullpen is a, has been a huge, huge help. Uh, Clay Holmes is still at a zero ERA, which is pretty nice. Um, the bullpen. Usually the bullpen is the one we – is the thing we <laughs> rant about. Exactly. Um, but hey, it's only May. We we still got yeah, we still uh, got four more months, Reggie. We still got four more months. A exactly. lot can happen, uh, my friend. A lot can yeah. happen. We still got four more months of this. Santana, 
phenomenal. Hamilton, phenomenal. phenomenal. Luke Weaver has been pretty damn good, too. I mean, look, we can use our bullpen in big situations. Yes. You know, you know quick outs and everything. Like, I can go to the Yankee bullpen and trust them. Like, that's a big deal. That's something that – I mean, look, the Yankee bullpen, for, for the longest time, the Yankee bullpen has been atrocious. Um, it wasn't been. really until the Girardi years where we started to see a bullpen that was very consistent, that can get you quality outs and, you know, and everything. And then, of course, Aaron Boone comes in here. It hasn't been terrible under Boone, but Boone overuses the bullpen like crazy. It's, it's he insane. does tend to overuse the it's bullpen. It's insane. Now, look, look and, and look, we give give them credit though because they've done a really, really nice job. So I I tip my cap to them. The Yankee pitching overall has been huge, 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 huge in April, um, and has really helped. Get them those those wins, the the nineteen wins that they got in between March and April. So that was pretty nice to, to see, and you know it, it's exciting stuff going into May. Now, yes, I'm the, the I'm Yankees, actually because usually this time, but like I said, I'm cautiously optimistic because right. we have to see how the rest of the month goes. Obviously, the the Orioles series was terrible. Oh, that was um, a terrible series, and you know what the thing is. I know that was a May series, but I got to say this. That scared me because, you know, bro, look at who we've been playing. Mm -hmm. Look at who we've been playing the past couple weeks. We've been playing. Look who we've been playing the past couple weeks. We've been playing the Astros, who've been trash. Astros stink. By the way, we have another matchup with the Astros. Yeah, we'll talk about that in in a few um, we have the D backs, which are meh, a joke. <laughs> we have the Jays, the Marlins, the Guardians, the Jays again, the Rays, the A's, which we split, which we should have won that series. <laughs> which we should have won that series. The yeah. Brewers. Which anyone who has a pulse could beat the Brewers. Yeah. Because, dude, what I'm trying to say is we've been, like, listen, I'm not trying to be a pessimist here. But I'm not trying to be a pessimist here, dude. But at the same time, we need to... But we shouldn't be beating our chest Wolf of Wall Street style and thinking, yeah, we're going all the way. No, we're beating teams that people that anyone with a pulse can beat. I'm sorry, Reg. I'm just sitting here telling you the truth. Like, I remember when the I remember my dad asked me about a week or so ago was when we play Baltimore. I'm like, end of April, beginning of May. He's like, that's gonna be our big test right there. And so far, folks, yeah. we nailed. Yeah, th- th- and look, we we knew the Baltimore Orioles were going to be the real team that the Yankees have to go through. I know the Yan- everyone talks about the Astros. Um, the Astros are garbage. Right now, they are. It doesn't mean that they won't catch up later. Don't don't sleep on the Astros. But the real team is the Orioles because the Orioles actually have a young up and coming team that's ready to compete in the playoffs. So, and, and of course, they're right in our division. So, you know, that that's our biggest test. We can get past the Orioles. That's a big deal. So, uh, Bill said it, you know, we, we tried with the Orioles. We didn't play well. Um, we had a get right series against Detroit, um, which is pretty nice. But, you know, for the rest of the month, Bill, before we go through everything, for the rest of the month, we have to see a consistent Yankee team hitting Agreed. defense. The pitching has to has to stay on track too. Uh, we fell off the wagon a bit in Baltimore. Now we we have to stay back on track, stay on track, uh, because this is going to be a really tough season. 
but it's it could be a very good season, very memorable season if everything stays where it is. And it starts with the hitting. Juan Soto's done a terrific job. We hope he continues to do a terrific job. We I don't want to see streaky Stanton. You know, John Carl Stanton's been really, really making me upset lately. These past couple of years, he's uh, not living up to what 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 I saw from him when we first got it. That that's and that's very unfortunate. Yeah. So that's so that's April and that's March and April. Are we ready to talk about May? Yep. Okay. Since we finished the O series. We're finishing the Detroit series today. The Yankees have already won that series. Mm -hmm. Like, if you live in the New York area today, and it's not going to be today by the time this is released, but it's going to be raining today. I don't know if they're going to get this whole thing in, but Detroit doesn't have an off day tomorrow, so they're going to do their best to get today in. Yeah. Shout out to the Detroit Tigers, though. The Tigers have actually played very well to start the season. And on Friday, they gave the Yankees a massive fit before the Yankees scored two runs in the ninth inning to win the game. Um, so, you know, the Tigers pitching has been great. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're, it's it's just good to see a young Tigers team really compete. And I'm glad that the Yankees got a real big test of that, too. So, um, should, I, I give my credit, a lot of credit to Detroit. They actually actually play the Yankees well. Uh, the past couple of days. Okay, so we're going to start with Tuesday's series against the Astros. It's at home. At home. Three games against the Astros. Reds, we get a win or lose that series? I think we should I mean, We should kick their ass. Uh, I don't know if, if that's going to happen, but we should kick their ass. Um, I'm a little worried about the Thursday game. Thursday game is a 5-0-5 start. Which That's is weird. Very, very unusual. The, lately, the yeah, baseball's been testing these times. You know, six forty-five, six fifteen. It's like I, I get it. You, you want in in some cities, it's not like public transit runs at nighttime. So in some cities, you're gonna have to start early. It can end early. Um, also, crimes up too. But um, you know. It, I mean, just just in general, like you know, the, the, these five o'clock, six o'clock, it's it's so dumb, so weird. Um, and you know what I'm also thinking, and this may sound like a dumb thing, but Billy Joel is having his birthday show on Thursday, so maybe that has something to do with maybe they don't want the trains to. <laughs> you know, it always comes back to Billy Joel, right? It always comes back to Billy Joel. We were us New Yorkers can't get enough of Billy Joel. Every Billy every Joel. excuse in the book. Like Billy. If you're a New Yorker who doesn't like Billy Joel, you should be excommunicated. You should be exiled to somewhere every, in the middle every, of Nebraska. Every New Yorker will make an excuse as to why we have to listen to Billy Joel. Um, yeah, it's like why do people from Boston have to listen to Aerosmith? <laughs> exactly. But anyway, well, yeah, it, we got three against uh, Houston. Yeah. Yeah, the but the I, I just want to point out that the five o'clock start is just incredibly weird. Um, but the, this should be a fairly fairly simple. The Astros are in disarray right now. Again, they can pick it up midway through the season, but it's not midway through the season right now, and the Astros are still struggling. So kick their ass. Uh, I think the Yankees. I don't know if they'll kick their ass, but I think they'll win the series for sure. Um, the rate. Okay, we got three against the Rays in Tampa. Um, this is good. I mean, this should also be fairly simple. Um, but if I'm mis not mistaken, the, the last time they faced the Rays, uh, they, they took two out of three. No, I think they may have took in. They took two out. Of... Oh, we took two out of three. They took two out of three. Yeah, they we took two out of three. Tampa. Last time. I like their chances in Tampa. I really do like their chances in Tampa. I think this would be another two out of three situation. Um, uh, okay, the Twins, I'm not going to lie. I see them losing this series. The Twins have been red hot lately. Yeah, the, the Twins are really good. They're better than I thought they would. The, that AL Central is actually better than I thought. The Royals are good. The Cleveland Guardians, they're good. Twins are good. 
So, you know, every, pretty much everyone outside of the White Sox are good. Uh, so I, 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 I'm I with you. I think it's like a two out of three Minnesota, especially since they're in Minnesota. Yeah, so I think the Twins are going to take that series. Yeah. Okay, the White Sox. I think the White Sox are going to take this series. I disagree. The White Sox are no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I think the Yankees are going to take this series. I'm sorry. Dang yeah. Uh, the the White Sox are terrible. I mean, yeah, the Yankees are going to take this series. There, there should be no reason why the Yankees can't win this one. Uh, sweep their asses. That's what I'll say. Yeah, I'm going. Yankees are taking the White Sox. Yeah. Okay, Mariners. It's a four game set at home. The Mariners are doing a great job so far. Um, better than I thought. You know, shame on me for counting them out. Um, and, you know, look, hitting, pitching, it's going to be really tough against Seattle. They've done a pretty nice job. I think this would be a split, two and two. I think this could be a split as well. Uh, then we have the Padres after that. Padres just acquired Luis Arise from the Marlins. He had a four for four night. Uh in the, his first Padres game. I mean, unbelievable. Um, it's a West Coast matchup. And I, I hate these West Coast trips, Bill. You know oh, I, mean? I hate the West Coast games too, yeah. buddy. I hate them too. What a disaster. Now, the, the good news about these West Coast trips, a lot of them are starting, just like the East Coast, they're starting at like nine and stuff. Now, of course, you know, if the Knicks are still playing, I'm going to be watching the Knicks. I'm not going to care about the Yankees. Versus any okay, game. you let's see a Knicks playoff game versus an early season Yankee game. <laughs> yeah, you, you 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 be the judge. Um, the Padres. Uh, I don't know. This might be a trap series. You know, Juan Soto's trying to prove that he's that. Not necessarily the Padres made a mistake, but you know, his worth. And then the Padres, they're trying to prove that they can be good without. Juan Soto, um, if you're gonna be, it might be emotional for Soto to go back to San Diego. I, I think this will be like a, two, I can see like a two out of three San Diego here, but I go see a two out of three Yankees here. It would no, nothing would shock me here. Nothing would shock you. No. It would be nice for a sweep, but I don't know if that's gonna. So, yeah, I think that I think they can win that series. Okay, next is the Angel. Uh, the, the Yankees in Anaheim. The Yankees gonna sweep. Yeah, the, the the this should be easy. No Mike Trout. Um, uh, Angels are in disarray. You know, this should be with, an easy series. Even with Mike Trout, the Angels were not really playing well. Even though Mike Trout was getting off to a incredible start. And it's a shame that a player like him uh, continues to get injured. I, I don't know how he uh, how how he continues to get injured, no matter what he does. Uh, but Trout out for a little bit after tearing his meniscus. This should be uh, this should be a fairly simple series for the Yankees. I say sweep. Bill says sweep. And then of course we go to San Francisco. Uh, that series will spill into June, but it does start in May. I have. The Yankees going two out of three in San Francisco. I do as well. So overall for May into early June, here's what my general stance is. I think this is going to be a generally, e I don't want to say generally easy. The two series I can see being difficult is going to be the Minnesota series and the Seattle series. Yeah, I I I hate this Seattle series because of the fact that the Mariners are better than I thought they would be. Um, I really hate it. And um, it's at home. The, the only thing that may mess with the Mariners is the time difference, but you know, the Yankees, I don't know. The Yankees, Yankees would, would get a little cocky here. So I, I would, I would, I would definitely be worried about the Mariners series. Uh, I'm not necessarily worried about the twin series. Um, you know, the twins are a good team. So, you know, 
you, you're going to run into good teams. It is what it is. Uh, but the Mariners series, that's that's something that I would love to see. So that is for Manny. Okay, we got a couple more things to do. Um, as you all know, a couple weeks ago, we have witnessed our the retirement of one of the Yankees' greatest announcers. Mm-hmm. We have witnessed the retirement of John Sterling. Yeah, can we give can the Hall of Fame give him the Ford Frick Award? Um, because he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. John Sterling has called like what five World Series championships. He's called a lot of World Series in general. Um uh, and a lot of big time Yankee wins. You know, so uh, definitely that. The one thing that I'm going to miss about John Sterling, though, is his longevity. You know, the fact that, you know, for so long he could call a game, you know, and be really good at it. And look, I know he had years where, you know, he, you know, missed calls or he would call the thing wrong and it was really annoying. But man, the dude called 162 games for a stretch. And you know what? Years. I mean, that's incredible. That is absolutely incredible. Because for Yankee fans our age, so the yeah. 30 and under crowd. Yeah, I'm part of the 30. Reg is part of the under. Um, part of the 30 and under crowd. John Sterling was basically the soundtrack to our fandom. Yeah. For, for, you know, for the five world championships that we were around for. Yeah. We hear the ball game over, World Series over, Yankees win. Ah, Yankees win. Yeah. So, and, you know, as you heard me say on SIP, I was actually at the game where they did his retirement and, like I said, I feel it was rather strange. They just, I feel like it's just something they scrunched together at the last minute. I think for Sterling, I don't know if he truly cared. He 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 wasn't downplaying, but he also wasn't necessarily. I, I, I don't know how to describe it. He he enjoyed it. He appreciated it. I think he understood how truly loved he was, but he didn't want to be so much in the spotlight. And it, I don't know why. Um, maybe he just you know wasn't wasn't necessarily his cup of tea. But I think he appreciates the Yankee fans, and I think he appreciated the job he was in. And you know, God bless the dude, man. You know, he grew up a Yankee fan, um, uh, and got to live his lifelong dream of watching Yankee baseball every day. I mean, <laughs> that's something I would love to do. So, yeah, and you know what? Like, he, you know, again, I've said this on SIP. The Yankees were probably thinking, well, John, if you want to do it this Saturday, we got to see who's available because a lot of the people might be, yeah, you know, because maybe, you know, Jeter and Mariano, they might have commitments they have to attend to. If you want, we could probably wait. But, but you know what? Day. I think I think I think John Sterling just wanted to get over. Bottom line, and you know he's probably saying, "Listen, my family's going to be there." Michael K and Susan Waldman, as we said, I'm sure he has a very close friendship with them. They're going to be there. That's all I care about. Yeah. yeah and so, all I could say is. Thank you, John, and enjoy your retirement. So to honor Mr. Sterling, yeah. Reg and I have put together our top five favorite Sterling home mm-hmm. run calls. All right, Reg, you want to begin with your number five? My number five, the Giambino. That was actually in my honorable mention. <laughs> hey, no, I mean, obviously, you know, I didn't – the the – when I started listening to John Sterling, you know, when I really started following the Yankees, um, you know, it was after the 01 season. So, you know, 
hearing the Giambino like was constant because you're Jason Giambi, you know, he came in 2002, came into uh, doing, you know, was raking home runs like nothing. Um, the Giambino. So yeah, so that's number five for me. Okay, okay. Um, I want to just give two quick honorable mentions: Giambino and Stantoni and Blast. Okay, cool. Okay, my number five. El Capitan for Derek okay. Jeter. All right. Because, dude, it's Derek Jeter. You, that, that would be a sin not to put him on this list. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going with El Capitan. I love the enthusiasm he said. The captain, El Capitan. So, yeah, that's my number five. Reggie, four. Number four, Robbie Cano. Don't you no. know? Not what do you know? A lot of people said, what do you know? It's don't you know? God, I totally forgot about that one. I feel so embarrassed. Robbie Cano, don't you know, baby? Robbie Cano, don't you know? Uh, man, I miss Cano, man. The Cano, no, I love Cano. I think his prime was terrific. You know, it's a shame that steroids and uh, his tenure with the Mets just ruined everything. So I'll tell you this if Cano didn't leave the Yankees, when Jeter retired, if he stayed with the Yankees, I could have possibly maybe seen him as a possible successor to Jeter. Can you imagine Cano staying with the Yankees all those years? No, it would have been, would have I mean, been great. We probably would have been caught up with the with the steroids, um, which would have been very unfortunate. But can you imagine Cano with Judge? <laughs> possibly Stanton? Oh my God, man! That would have been. Well, I don't even know. We make the Taurus trip. My number, my number four. Burn, baby, burn. That's a that's a four. Really? Why? Why is it number oh. four? Oh, because I like these other calls better. Okay. No, right. but I love Bernie Williams. Who doesn't? I just love the, I you know I again I I like love the alliteration in that I know I sound like a total nerd, mm -hmm. but I think some of the other calls that I'm gonna hear I kind of like I kind of think they're a little more creative, right? But no, I love, I love Ber I love Bernie Williams. I've always loved him. Also, did she give he's actually playing with the uh, New York Philharmonic now? That's pretty cool. Like that, that's actually awesome to to, to hear. You know. Because, actually, funny story about Bernie before we move on. Um, My friend, my good friend JT Mahoney, shout out to him. Um, He works at a radio station. I'm not going to say which one. But he was, he, they were actually working at an event that Bernie Williams was sponsoring. They were doing a celebrity softball game. And then he was doing a concert later. And he was only doing the softball game. And you know who was there? Mariano. Right. And he told me who was going to be there. I said, Bill, how would you like if I see, could see to get either Bernie or Mariano for Sports Insanity? I'm like, do it. He goes, sorry, I couldn't do it. I'm like, okay, thanks for the effort. Okay, but burn, baby, burn. So burn, baby, burn for you is number four. It's shocking, but okay. Um, well, would you put it higher or lower? Higher. Oh, you, you'll see. It's going to be higher, isn't it? Number three, go. Uh, number three, A-bomb from A-rod. Number three. Guess what? What? In the words of JT on our podcast, Reg, mm -hmm. we swiped right. <laughs> that was my number three as well. Yeah, no, I mean, it. it it's, it, it's a creative... It is. Very creative. And Al Rodriguez loved it. His mom loved it. You know, there was a point of time, John Stern was talking about, there was a point of time where, you know, people didn't like that call, that home run call. Did you say why? Or? Well, well no, I, I, I just think people thought it was pretty silly or whatever. But then he heard that A-Rod's family liked it. So he's like, oh, A-Rod likes it and his family likes it. Then I'm just going to keep saying it. I'm, I remember that. And listen, you know my views on A-Rod. I've kind of mellowed out on him over the years. But 
still, I, I, I've always loved hearing that call. An A bomb, burn it on. Yeah, no. And there was that time, and I've talked about this before when, when he accidentally, when Matsui hit the home run, and he was like, "An A bomb, or it would be if A Rod hit it." <laughs> I remember hearing that on the radio. My yeah. dad was like, "Oh boy, he's gonna get a lot of hate now for that." Oh my god. Um. But yeah, that's our number. I guess that's our number three, an A bomb for A Rod. All right, Reggie boy, what's your number two? Number two, I had a, I had a wrestle number two. If I'm being honest, okay. Um, my number two has to be the All Rise. Here comes the judge. Here comes the judge. I, I wrestle with this one because one, um, it's fresh in our minds now that you know Aaron Judge is currently playing with the Yankees. Yeah. So it's, it's fresh in our minds, but the fact that he mixes Judgment Day with All Rise, here comes the judge, and of course Aaron Judge is a home run machine. So you know it, it's it, it's to me it was definitely something that should be at the top. It's one of his best calls easily. And, oh, that is a great call! You know, it, here it, comes it, the it, judge. It's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Okay, my number two. Mm-hmm. A thriller for Godzilla. Okay, I like that. That's a good one. That's a that's a really good. One. I that was for Hideki Matsui, and I always just thought that was so cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that you're just like I don't know how some people would take that because you know Godzilla Japanese could be possible cultural appropriation, but. Yeah, but but that that's who Matsui was. Matsui was Godzilla. That was his nickname, Godzilla. Oh, it was it was perfect. It was, it was a perfect call for him. Yeah, and, I, and I, I just love like I think what was what was so cool about Sterling, and a lot of people would just think, oh, it's just some, oh, it's just some baseball announcer making calls. But you know what? One of the things is is the poetry in his calls was the poetry, the alliteration, the Burn, baby, burn! The thriller for Godzilla. The poetry, the, the yeah. scheme in those is brilliant. Right. Um. No, the M- Matsui was a a stud. I love Matsui. Oh, I love Matsui too. Oh man, I I miss him a lot. You know, he 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 was a real he was a dog, dude. And you know what? I actually heard. I think I may have told you the story when I was going to the playoff game two years ago. I was talking to these kids. I want to say they were in like their mid to late teens. They were going to the game too, and they were telling me that um their uncle was Matsui's interpreter. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh my god, that, that's true. That's incredible. Because Matsui was actually thrown out the first pitch that night, right? And they said Matsui. So one of the guys met him. And said he's actually a really nice guy. I believe it. I believe I, it. I can see that. He, he actually does seem like really a real, cool he's a yeah. really nice guy. I believe and, it. And um, one time, their uncle and him went out for dinner. They told me the story. I guess the um, the uncle was reaching for the wallet, and he's like, "I got it. Don't worry." Matsui paid for dinner. So, but what I've seen, Matsui actually seems like a really cool guy. Yeah. No. I, I, it was a pleasure watching him play. Yeah. yeah. And so that is my number two. Oh! Godzilla. All right, so Bill. All right, that's our number Godzilla. one. Number one. First of all, give me an honorable mentions. Uh, God, the thrill of Godzilla is one of them. Pretty much anything with singing, just because it's funny. Any anything where uh, John Sterling had to sing the John Carlo, the old Dominica, whatever. Um, the the Soriano, who's sorry now. Um. Young Hervis Solarte, Solarte, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, a lot of those were like musical references from like years ago. So yeah. any of those gets uh, my uh, honorable mention. Any Giancarlo call also is an honorable mention because it's funny <laughs> and everything. Um, But the biggest honorable mention to me was there's two of them, actually. There's Georgie Juice one, 
Jorge Posada. Oh, I forgot about that one. And then the the Teixeira, Mark sends a text message. Text message. That 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 was actually that was cool. awesome. I didn't I, I didn't love the here's the ones I didn't love. I didn't love Swishalicious. I uh. thought it was silly. Um look, it, it was funny at the time, but Swishalicious was, was silly. But that was stupid. Um, I did I I liked it, didn't love it. Granny. Uh who can the granny man can? It was, cor- it was corny. It was pretty Because cool. you know what? I kind of feel like, you know, I'm gonna tell you about that with the the granny man can. Yeah. It's just that I feel like it's I feel like that's one of his more and I hate to say it, one of his more lazier calls. Yeah. Yeah. Like and he didn't really put much thought nothing. into it because Granderson, Grandy, who, who, no, 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 and I felt like he was just watching Willy Wonka on the Chocolate Factory, yeah, I and know. he just like, and he heard that song, the Candy Man Can. Was, yeah. Okay, I need a nickname for Granderson. Wait, the Candy Man Can. He's like, wait a minute, Grandy, the Grandy Man Can. I felt like that's how he came up with it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. that is not one of my favorites. Hey, no, nothing is as lazy as Carter. He hit it harder. Remember Carter and harder. Oh my god! I actually don't remember that, but that uh, does sound. Stupid. No, no Yankee fan does. It was twenty seventeen <laughs> in AK. Oh, 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 oh remember the G Man, the He Man? Remember that G Man Choi? Uh, I do not remember that one. I guess oh, nobody no. else. <laughs> yeah, G Man Choi. But <laughs> AK, okay, number one, number one, and it's the first one. Bill, burn, baby, burn. Dude, Burn Baby Burn was repeated by Yankee fans from when the call was first made until Bernie Williams left baseball. Burn Baby Burn. You cannot tell me that that is not the best. The best is always the first one. That's that's my that's my opinion. And it's just fun to say Burn Baby Burn. It's that alliteration Bernie Burn Williams, Baby Burn. And Bernie Williams Always came up in the clutch, man. You know, you know, we always talk about the core four in those World Series runs. Bernie Williams was a massive part of those World Series. We cannot. He's forget. the core five. He's like more the more, more like yeah okay fine core five fine. Well, because you know what the reason why he, Bernie's yeah. not included in that group is because he he wasn't with them for that last World Series in two thousand nine. But 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 he was still a part of that era you know but yeah burn baby burn the first one john sterling to ever do it it was different it was natural everyone recited it everyone loved burn baby burn baby okay so. you know what my number one is which one first i want to give a shout out to my brother dan because this was his favorite player okay let the guardy party no, begin. That's, that's not a good one either. No, I, I like it. No, as a terrible dude, aren't we both enti- aren't we all entitled to our opinions? Oh, uh, okay. Explain why. Why you know is what? that number one over Burn Baby Burn? Okay, you know what? I'll tell you why. Because you know there was another one that he did that I kind of like. Well, give us an honorable mention. The guardy go guardy, but the guardy party because you know what? I like the creativity in that one. Because you know what? He could have just said, Gardy, hit it, Hardy, or something like that. But no, I think, okay, would it be one of his, is that going to be on a plaque somewhere? No, but I like it because it's fun. I like it because it's, you know, you can tell he put some thought into that. And he didn't just, you know, because no, I love Burn Baby Burn. I love El Capitan. I love Gorilla for Godzilla. I love Text Message. I but a lot of them he's like sitting there. Okay, he's probably sitting there thinking, okay, let me get a little create, let me have a little fun and get a little creative with this. But I I like that he put the creativity in there. Let the guardy party begin. It, or it, guardy hit it, guardy goes yardy. Like he could have picked something lazy, like guardy hit it, hardy. See. If he had done that, that would be better than Guardy Goes Yardy or Guardy Party. I, I don't know. I thought it was lean. That, those, 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 that but poem. you know what, Reg? You know what they say? 
Opinions are like ass. Everybody has them and they all stink. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, I'm we're entitled to I'm entitled to my opinion, you're entitled to yours. That's what's so great about this great land of ours. Um, um but um, ooh, John Sterling had a lot of interesting calls. Um another call that should be noted, the Bamtino. Um, the Bamtino. Um that that's another one. Um, did he ever have a call for Sheffield? I don't remember what was Sheffield. He probably didn't have one for Sheffield. Um, yeah. But oh, the anyway. positively demonic. That was Johnny Damon. That wasn't the greatest. Um, yeah, there, there, that could there be taken of, in so many a lot ways. Of, there are a lot of interesting, interesting calls. Um, but his coming, but for his going away party. The fact that he had the Juan Soto called the marvelous, wonderful, like that was actually pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. That uh, shows you even at 80 something years song. old, he still got it up there. That was the Swan song. Uh, oh, uh, and downtown goes Frazier for Clint Frazier. Remember, remember that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was awesome too. Okay, so yeah, anyway, anyway. Guess what? Guess what's time for? Okay. It's time for Stump the Reg. Okay. Oh, Reg, I'm getting my revenge today. He's been he's been waiting for this. Let's go. I have been waiting for this moment. Okay. I have two questions for you today. Two questions. All right. And they were really well thought out. Okay. Okay. Question one. Since we're on Sterling, All what right. basketball team did Sterling announce for? The Atlanta it- Hawks. It was it? He gone. Okay, well, well, A, the Atlanta Hawks, B, the Knicks, C, the Celtics, or D, the Nets. The Atlanta Hawks. He also he also did some commentary for the Nets, but he was an Atlanta Hawks play by play announcer. Yes, he was. Oh, he he was. Okay, that I made the, the mistake. The, the the net the Nets he did for Yes Network sometimes. Um, did he do any other teams? Um. Oh. oh, yeah, you're right. He did do the Atlanta Hawks. He yeah. also did. He also did the Braves too for a while. Yeah, he did the Braves broadcast. He he was the Braves broadcast on what I think it was on TBS. Um, for the Braves, but he, he did the Atlanta Hawks. Yes, he also did the Islanders. I I never saw John Sterling as a hockey guy. That that's incredible. No, back in like the. When he came to New York as a broadcasting, you, I never, that I can never see John Sterling as a hockey guy. That's incredible. <laughs> That's okay, incredible. so I'll give you that one. Fine, but anyway, you give me double the points because I said the Nets and I said the Hawks. So okay, so this one, I'm gonna be honest. This was a bit of a tough one that okay. I had to figure out. And I look because there's multiple people who did this, and I couldn't find all. Okay. So, as you know, last Sunday, Anthony Rizzo hit his 300th home run. Okay. He is the 16th Yankee to do so as a Yankee. So, the so player to do his 300th home run as a Yankee. Okay. I've only included Rizzo. I've only found 13. 13. Can you name them? Aside from Rizzo. Name 13? 12. Um, 300. Okay. Mantle. Mantle. Yes, he's one. Oh. As a Yankee. Just, just hit Yankee. the 300th career as a Yankee. As a Yankee. All right. Got Mantle. Okay, cool. Giambi? Correct. Um, Who else? So Mickey, Giambi... Uh, who else is 300? Who hit 300? They're a bunch of them. Um, mother, mother of God. Um, babe, the babe. Correct. Um, that's three. Um, big time Yankee home run hitters. Um, Uh, 
Uh, Man is Manly up there? Manly? Nope. Not there. Yeah, I, I, I think we got just a guess. Um, yeah, Madeline did not hit three hundred. Uh, I think Giancarlo. Giancarlo. Yes, did. Giancarlo's one. Giancarlo did it. Um, three hundred career home run. Yeah, a ton of them in his career, but he's also a journeyman. Uh Reggie Jackson. Yes. Okay. Um uh, no, that was four hundred home runs. You were thinking A Rod, weren't you? I was thinking I was thinking Sheffield. But I know that's not that's not correct. Um, I told you I wasn't going to let you off easy. Oh. Trying to think of big time power hitters. Probably. We got a lot. Um, Who's a big home run machine? That that's the big question. Um, Garrett did do it. He did. Oh, he did. Garrett. Boom. The okay. move back. Well done. Okay. Um. So Lou Gehrig. Paul, he didn't do it. Who? Paul O'Neill, did he, he didn't get the 300 home runs, did he? Uh, I don't think so. Well, he did. I don't think he did it as a Yankee. No, he did yeah. not get to 300. No. We'll count as a um, no, he didn't get. No, he didn't hit three hundred. Yeah. Um. Three hundred home runs in the game. It's three hundred. Um. A lot of these players. Like, how far are we talking? Okay. Okay. Two of them are like forties, fifties. Forties and the fifties. One of them is like the eighties. Eighties. Dave Winfield. Yes. Okay, that's a good hint. Um, there's a second one in the eighties. Nah. Oh no, one was in the nineties. Uh, there's one in the 90s. One in the 90s. And one in like the early 2010s. Uh, let's see, Daryl Strawberry, did you ever get to three? Yes. Okay. So Daryl Strawberry, that's a good one. Um, I wasn't sure about Daryl because he spent so much time with the Mets and the, and the Dodgers and stuff that I wasn't sure. Okay. Uh, one of the 2010s. 
early 2010s. Early 2010s. Oh my god. Those 2010 teams. Um, you had Swisher. You didn't do it. Um Teixeira? Teixeira? Yes. Okay. How many have I in my name so far? You have two left. I have two left. Okay. 40s and 50s, you say? Yes. Joe D? Yes. Okay. And then... um, Yogi? Yes. Okay. So you got him. All right, cool. That was tough. Yes. That was a really tough one. But so that uh, wasn't like last time. The last time. No, 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 no. Those, those were easy. That was a tough one. That was a good, that was a good one, Bill. I like that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So, Woo. See, I told you, but Bill, Bill does his shit. He knows his stuff. He 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 really knows how to tweak my mind a little bit. But we, we got them. We got them. Yeah, last time I, I think I was just having an off day. So I've redeemed myself, sort of. <laughs> okay, so that is our show for today. We hope you enjoyed. If they want to know more, Reg, where do these lovely folks go? Okay, the Sports Insanity Network dot com podcasts are there. All the history and stuff, possibly links to or podcasts. You can get them anywhere you go. Go to Spotify. Go to Apple. Uh, our SIP Sports Any Podcast. That's on iHeartRadio too. We're, we're in live. Uh, so please, um, listen to our podcast. Read our blogs. This show is on YouTube. Yes, it so is. Please like, come subscribe. Please hit that little bell thingy. Get notifications when when we post new videos. Um, and um, enjoy more of the Sports Sandy Network. We're on X. At S and Sandy Real. We're on Facebook as well. At S and Sandy Real. Please follow our network. We appreciate you. We love you. And we're taking off. All right. So for the Sports and Sandy Network, I'm Bill Corpus Crispy Murphy. Danny Boy Reg signing off. So stay safe. Take care. And let's go Yankees. Go Yanks.